I woke up this morning and I thought, what adventure can I have today? And I thought, okay, well, what adventure am I? If I'm always in quest of the adventure and I'm not being the adventure, what adventure am I expecting to have? Why do Australians love to go barefoot? Hi, Pip. Are you still barefoot? Uh, she must know something we don't. What? It's been called one of the weirdest, perplexing, odd, unexplainable Australian cultural habits. Maybe I'm living in the wrong country. Now, this might seem like an ordinary habit to everyday Australians, but actually, it's not so normal to other people around the world. Feet are a funny thing. How come you're not wearing shoes, Gypsy? And most people don't like feet. Everybody else is wearing shoes. Well, I'm not. I think that it's just something that we shouldn't be promoting or drawing attention to. Is this woman a mother? Because I am. And I remember when I gave birth, I was pretty freaking happy to see two little feet with ten little toes. They were the most precious things to me, including her hands and her head and the rest of their body. She's projecting her fear onto you so that you will believe that. So where in you do you concur to that? What belief systems do you have that prevent you, that keep you in fear of walking barefoot and people like me who walk barefoot? So for some reason, fashion has dictated that these conventional shoes have this crazy pointed toe. And if you look at the kind of history of these style shoes, you had the ruling elites who kind of adopted this fashion of really elongated pointed shoes as a way of kind of saying F you to the working classes who couldn't wear those kinds of shoes because they had to do manual labor. That explains a lot. So obviously when we're exploring what's really good for our feet in terms of healthy movement, you'd be hard pressed to find a better example that a pointed shoe is, is exactly the opposite of what we want here. Have you ever seen people where their toes are like permanently crossed? Pointed shoes are actually listed as one of the causes of bunions. So these kinds of shoes are literally damaging our feet. That's because they've been stuffing their feet in those types of shoes for years years. People's feet kind of adapt to this pointed shape as a result of wearing these shoes their whole lives. And what's really interesting though is that your feet will grow back to their natural shape when you switch to barefoot shoes. It's amazing how many people have stopped Dom and I in the last week or so and, and asked us, why do you walk barefoot? Aren't you afraid of walking on glass? No, <laughs> um, because I watch where I'm going. I don't know where other people look when they're walking, but I kind of look like everywhere. Where do you look when you walk? I also think that walking in the woods barefoot has kind of preconditioned me for walking barefoot out in the city. Because when you walk in the woods, you have to be very mindful of things like roots that grow up in the ground and sticks and, and sharp rocks and all sorts of things like that. So you're always kind of surveying the land under your feet as well as surveying everything around you because when you're out in the deep woods, you know, there's wild animals there, right? <laughs> it's overcast this morning. It's perfect absolutely perfect for walking barefoot because the ground is cool, the air is cool. I might get rained on, but it's okay, I don't melt. A little rain, I mean, why do people go in the shower and yet fear the rain? I don't know, I don't understand that concept. Obviously, they're more concerned about their clothes than they are about getting wet. <laughs> the other question I get asked a lot is like, aren't your feet really super calloused? Hello. <laughs> I'm in dry clothes, I'm in my bathroom, but I wanted to show you my feet. As you can see, they're not callous, they're just dirty. <laughs> if you have a fear that your feet are gonna get calloused, it's probably because you're not taking care of your feet after you've walked barefoot, and that's key. So what do I do? Well, I wash them. I use one of these, and I use one of these, and some soap. And then, of course, the whole idea of you're walking around the neighborhood without shoes, and you know, a lot of people feel embarrassed by that. People are embarrassed by so many things. I mean, they're embarrassed if they have a zit on their face. They're embarrassed if their hair doesn't look right. They're embarrassed if they got food stains on their shirt or holes. I gotta go under. I'm only five foot three and a half, but that's still pretty low. <laughs> I think people are far too embarrassed by far too many things. You know what I mean? But what I don't understand is how can people have confidence when they live in so much fear, in so much embarrassment? Embarrassment? stop so many people 
from doing so many wonderful things. Now that said, I still do get embarrassed when I've got food in between my teeth and I'm talking to somebody and I don't know it's there and they're seeing it, but they're not telling me. Do you got friends like that? I prefer friends that say, hey, you got something between your teeth. Is that broccoli? <laughs> I think the biggest fear that most people have is the fear of being different, of being a weirdo. <laughs> I got no problem with that. I'm weird and I know it. I'm okay with it. Well, the rain has begun. I interrupt this pre-scheduled video to apologize. In advance, I apologize for the poor quality of audio in this video. My phone got rained on. I forgot to take my phone condom and it got wet. Anyway, that's the reason for the sounds. <sighs> Alas, I do recall before I left that I left many of the windows open, so I might want to get home and close them. Yeah, I'm soaked, but I don't care. I came up this morning to have an adventure. I didn't want to dictate what the adventure was. Being caught in a rainstorm is a bit of an adventure. And I guess I could have brought an umbrella, but where's the fun in that? So adventure, check, check. I think it's lovely when people leave weeds that flower on their lawn. That's a little diversity, don't you think? I've heard many people say over the years, aren't you afraid you're gonna catch your death of pneumonia like walking out in the rain? I walked out in the rain a lot as a kid and I'm still alive, so I don't know, isn't that testimony enough? But of course, I think the greatest fear is the fear of being uncivilized. That's what most people fear because we're all trying to fit in to look like we're civilized and respectable and I don't seem to fit into that mold, at least not on days when I'm out barefoot walking and I'm also walking in the rain barefoot. <laughs> and then there's the fear of, well, you must be really immature. So the fear of not being grown up enough, not being responsible. And really? So how many excuses of weather and clothing do you use that prevents you from being a little more free, a little more childlike? Not necessarily childish, but definitely childlike. I've been a child. I've been a parent of a child. Kids don't worry about things like that. So why do we as adults give in to all that? Part of uh, what has given me a new lease on life is giving whatever suppressed and depressed inner child that is incredibly innocent and creative and whoever, whatever this inner child of me is, seems to have talents and gifts and skills and capacities that I don't allow myself to have because, you know, I got too many friggin' judgments and limitations on what I think that I can be, do, and have in this world. So, you know, kudos to your inner child, right? Yeah, uh, how have you let your inner child out today? What are the fears that you use to prevent you from doing the things that you'd like to do? And I only ask because, you know, recently I realized that I was doing that too. And I thought, that's not the kind of life I wanna live because where's the joy in that? And, you know, somebody like me, I kinda wanna suck the marrow out of the bone. That's kinda hard to do when I'm constantly living in fear of what other people think of me or worse, what I think of myself based on what society tells me I should think of me. Stop raining. It's there somewhere. Now that said, do I care what other people think? Yeah. I do. I just don't build my whole reality based on what other people care about or what other people think about me or what other people tell me. They try to convince me what I should think of me based on what they think of me. I try not to get too caught up in all that. I know a lot of people who are simply afraid just to walk alone, let alone walk barefoot. You know, over the course of my life, I've been accused of being a show-off for doing things so publicly. But my point of view is somebody has to be the example and to be the example you have to be public you can't do that in private i have farmer's tan from wearing my sleeves <laughs> I also use one of these, especially because I'm walking on tar or asphalt, I guess. 
it can discolor your skin, so you really gotta scrub it if you want really clean feet. A little elbow power, right? Now my feet look pink and they might look sore, but they're not, they're just pink. <laughs> I just have really pink feet. I kind of always have. I showed you the left foot, so I thought it might only be fair to show you the right foot. Aren't they cute? They're still a little dirty though. A little bit dirty there, gotta scrub a little more. Oh, a little dirty there still. Oh, a little dirty there and a little dirty there. And that's about as much foot care as I give my feet. I mean, you know, apart from cleaning the nails and trimming the nails, but it's not a lot of work. A little more scrubbing, but as you can see, there's no calluses. You know, that's barefoot walking. Basically, I haven't wore shoes since the snow melted. No cuts, never stepped on glass. No, don't intend to. And as you can see, it doesn't really damage your feet at all. If it's damaging your feet, well then maybe you do need to wear flip-flops or shoes. Or maybe you just need to learn how to really take care of your feet in a different kind of way, other than the way that you've been currently caring for your feet if they're not in really good condition. Make sense?